Welcome to CPCS Questions and Answers. The latest questions and answers for A23, Skid Steer Loader, Theory Test. Question 1. Give four reasons that may cause the skid steer to tip over sideways. The answer is. 1. Soft ground. 2. Traveling or turning along slopes. 3. Uneven loads in the bucket. 4. Traveling with speed on corners. 5. Severe uneven ground. 6. Soft tires. 7. Driving with the bucket raised. Question 2. On a semi-automatic quick hitch bucket attaching system. A. What is the purpose of the safety pin? And B. What checks must be made to the pin before use? The answer is. A. The purpose of the safety pin is to prevent the unclasp of the latch system. B. Should be checked if it is in the locked position and correct place also for wear, cracks and damage. Question 3. Name four different types or levels of disciplinary actions or sanctions that can be applied, by employers and judicial bodies, to operators of plants who do not comply with, or follow legislation and regulations. The answer is. 1. Verbal warnings. 2. Written warnings. 3. Loss of the job, dismissal. 4. Fine. 5. Prosecution. 6. Prison sentence. Question 4. When working in a confined area or space, name three hazards that can occur. The answer is. 1. Fumes. 2. Noise. 3. Limited visibility. 4. Workforce. Question 5. What is the purpose of a risk assessment? The answer is. The purpose of a risk assessment is to identify and place control measures on hazards. Question 6. On non-self-leveling buckets, what problem can occur if a fully loaded bucket is raised to full height? The answer is. The bucket can tip over backwards emptying the bucket contents on the cab. Question 7. If setting up to work in a pedestrianized area, state three factors that need to be taken into account. The answer is. 1. Safe route for pedestrians with appropriate signage should be provided. 2. Make sure there is enough room for materials and machine movements. 3. Noise, dust, and fumes should be kept to a minimum. 4. Method statement and risk assessments are in place. Question 8. A. Name three purposes of the raised lugs on tires, and B. What can happen to a skid steer if the lugs are severely worn? The answer is. A. 1. Providing help when braking. 2. Providing adherence on soft ground. 3. Assisting when steering. B. Worn or bald tires can cause skidding or sliding making steering more difficult and the tire more vulnerable to punctures. Question 9. What problems and hazards can soft ground cause to a loaded skid steer? The answer is. 1. Slows the speed of the machine. 2. Makes it difficult to drive through. 3. The machine can sink and get stuck. 4. The machine can tip over sideways. Question 10. How can a skid steer turn around within its own area? The answer is. Forward and the reverse is applied simultaneously on each drive. Question 11. A. What is the minimum distance allowed near open trenches, when traveling with a loaded skid steer, and B. Explain why. The answer is. A. Greater than the trench depth. B. Getting too close to a trench can cause it to collapse. Question 12. 
if checking the oil level using a dipstick, why must gloves be worn? The answer is. Gloves must be worn to avoid oil contact with the skin which can cause skin problems. Question 13. Whenever possible, who should decide the positioning of the vehicle to be loaded? The answer is. The skid steer loader operator. Question 14. States two requirements of using a stop block or earth bank, berm, at a trench discharging point. The answer is. 1. Stops the machine rolling into the trench. 2. Reduces the danger of trench collapse. Question 15. If access or egress to or from the cab has to be via the front of the machine, state two precautions to be observed before exiting the machine. The answer is. 1. Loader arms must be lowered to ground. 2. Then engine switched off and park brake applied. Question 16. How can a qualification or card benefit a plant operator? The answer is. The operator can prove his skills, have better prospects of employment and promotion. Question 17. A. What is the purpose of a method statement, and B. What is required of the operator? The answer is. A. A method statement describes how the work will be done safely and efficiently. B. The operator must be compliant with the method statement. Question 18. What are the possible outcomes of facing prosecution for not complying with legislation and regulations? The answer is. If facing prosecution at the court hearing there are two possible outcomes. 1. You can prove that you fulfilled the legal requirements and you are probably going to be found not guilty. 2. You are found guilty and you face a prison sentence or a substantial fine. Question 19. Why should a skid steer be refueled at the end of the day? The answer is. The machine should be refueled at the end of the day to prevent condensation from building up in the tank as it's cooling down. Question 20. Why are plant operators generally regarded as safety critical workers? The answer is. The plant operators are considered safety critical workers because of the potential risk of an accident. They can cause harm to themselves or others if they do an unsafe act. Question 21. What does the Health and Safety at Work Act require employers to do with regards specifically to plant? The answer is. The employer must ensure the plant is safe and maintained. Question 22. What is the purpose of the counterweight of the machine? The answer is. To minimize the overturning effect of the front loader. Question 23. What is the definition of, or how can a hazard be described? The answer is. A hazard is anything that can cause harm to people, property, or the environment. Question 24. When parking the machine at the end of the shift, name three places where the machine should not be parked. The answer is. 1. Do not park in front of entrances or exits. 2. Do not park on soft ground. 3. Do not park on pedestrian routes. 4. Do not park on slopes. 5. Do not park close to trenches or stockpiles. Question 25. Before leaving the cab for a rest break, after parking and switching off the machine, what final action must be carried out? The answer is. The machine must be isolated, windows closed, doors closed, and locked. Question 26. Give two reasons why the skid steer operator should have an understanding of the type of material being loaded. The answer is. 1. It can affect the transportation of materials example, silt will stick to the body of the truck. 2. A denser material may overload the tires before the bucket is full. 3. 
the material may need to be tipped at a different location. 4. The material may spill during transportation. Question 27. In what situation does a hard hat not need to be worn when operating a skid steer? The answer is. When the operator is in an enclosed structure that meets the FOPS regulations. Question 28. Where should the operator's manual be kept and why? The answer is. The operator's manual should be kept inside the machine in a place where the operator has easy access. Question 29. The operator has to fit and use a new attachment using a quick hitch coupler that they are unfamiliar with. What do regulations i.e. Pure 98 and other guidance require the operator to have? The answer is. Appropriate training and up-to-date information for that particular piece of equipment. Question 30. When constructing a ramp to load a small crusher, name three considerations to take into account. The answer is. 1. Ramp is firm and solid enough. 2. The ramp must be wide enough. 3. The ramp must not be too steep. Question 31. Why should a skid steer not be traveled if there is no attachment or bucket fitted to the loader arms? The answer is. Excessive weight to the rear can make the machine unstable. Question 32. Who should determine the maximum load that should be placed into a load transporting vehicle? The answer is. The load transporter operator. Question 33. Using the operator's manual, state the figure for the tire's operating pressure. Note, the operator's manual for the machine being used for the test must be available for reference by the candidate. The answer is. The operator's manual will be provided by the test center and you will look have to look at the index and find the tires chapter go there and read the figure for the tire pressure. The page number must be read as well. Question 34. What is the purpose of a roll or ROPS frame? The answer is. The purpose of ROPS is to provide protection in the eventuality of a rollover with the machine. Question 35. Describe briefly how a wheeled skid steer or steers changes direction. The answer is. It steers through hydraulic motors, wheels on one side speed up or slow down causing a change in direction. Question 36. A. What determines the minimum distances that any part of plant and machinery has to be kept from overhead electricity lines, and B. Explain why a distance should be kept. The answer is A. The amount of voltage that runs through the electricity lines and the support used for the electricity lines, wooden poles, or metal poles. B. Because the electricity can arch or jump gaps. Question 37. How are skid steer bucket sizes calculated? The answer is By volume in cubic meters, M3. Question 38. Why should different materials be segregated during extracting? The answer is. Because the soils can be reused elsewhere. Question 39. If the skid steer is being traveled or working on the public highway, including adjacent pavement and verges, the Road Traffic Act applies. A. What type of license and which classes should the operator hold? And B. What is the minimum age allowed? The answer is. A. The operator should have a full UK category B. Driving license. B. 1. Minimum 18 years old if the machine is under 7.5 tons. 2. Minimum 21 years old if the machine is over 7.5 tons. Question 40. When traveling on wet clay or rock, what effect does this have on the skid steer? The answer is. The grip is reduced which may cause loss of control. Question 41. The operator has been asked to drive the machine onto a transporter or trailer. A. 
who is responsible for the loading operations, and b. State four actions to be considered by the operator before loading commences. The answer is a. The transporter driver is responsible for the loading operation. b. 1. A level area with sufficient room to maneuver should be selected. 2. Check for overhead obstructions. 3. The machine should be clean. 4. The transporter should be suitable and in good condition. 5. The ramps should be adjusted to fit the machine. 6. The operator's manual should be consulted to find the loading procedure. 7. The area should be clear of people and other plants. Question 42. Name three ways in which an operator can minimize their impact upon the environment whilst using the machine. The answer is 1. Switch off the engine while the machine is not in use. 2. Check tires pressure. 3. Do not overfill while refueling, clean up any spillage. 4. Dispose of any waste correctly. 5. Plan the work prior to start, to maximize work efficiency. Question 43. When working in a confined area or space. A. What danger can be present with regards to the rear of the machine? B. What are the recommended minimum distance? And C. What measures must be implemented if the gap is less? The answer is. A. Counterweight can get close to structures creating a hazard and increasing the risk of damage or harm to the workforce. B. The minimum distance between the machine and obstacles is 600 mm. C. Fences should be placed surrounding the area with appropriate signage and access restricted. Question 44. Why must the seat belt be worn, even within the confines of the cab? The answer is. Wearing the seat belt will keep the operator stable in the seat in the eventuality of a rollover. Question 45. On pneumatic tire equipped machines, what is a possible consequence of using a tire with a deep cut in the side wall? The answer is. Debris and sharp objects can enter in the cut causing the tire to puncture. Question 46. Skid steers may be equipped with a clamshell bucket. Name two functions of this type of bucket. The answer is. 1. Grab function. 2. Spread function. 3. Grade function. Question 47. During work, the engine starts to overheat. Explain the danger if someone tries to remove the radiator or expansion tank cap. The answer is. Removing the radiator tank cap will cause the hot liquid inside to be released under pressure and could cause burns. Question 48. An operator has been asked to transport a bucket of spoil down the public highway, for which the Road Traffic Act applies. What effect can this have on this activity? The answer is. The machine must be road legal registered, insured, taxed, mirrors, brakes, the operator must have the appropriate driving license and the operation can be done for a distance of a maximum of 1,000 yards one time. Question 49. Name three ways that a plant operator can contribute to ensuring repeat business with the client or principal contractor. The answer is. 1. Compliance with the method statements. 2. Cooperation with the workforce. 3. Safe working practices. Question 50. Using the operator's manual, State the cold starting procedure for the machine. Note, the operator's manual for the machine being used for the test must be available for reference by the candidate. The answer is. Find the cold start procedure in the index, go to the page and read the paragraph that describes the cold start procedure. Page number must be read as well. Question 51. 
lists six typical subject areas that should be covered in a site induction. The answer is 1. First aid 2. Escape routes 3. Lifting operations 4. Working at heights 5. Site layout and welfare facilities 6. Working in confined spaces 7. Method statements Question 52 If the operator has to top up the hydraulic oil, state two precautions to ensure the cleanliness of the system. The answer is 1. Clean the filler cap and the area surrounding it before. 2. Use only clean transfer equipment. Question 53. Describe one physical method of checking that the attachment is fully secured to the coupler prior to work. The answer is. Implement rotation through the complete range as close to the ground as possible. Question 54. Explain all visual checks that must be carried out on all types of quick hitch bucket attaching systems before use. The answer is 1. Check for any signs of damage to the coupler. 2. Check for cracks or wear that might reduce the strength. 3. Check for oil leaks. 4. Check if attachments are the correct size and weight. 5. Check if the coupler is tested and certified. 6. Check for excessive play which will allow too much movement and might make it unsafe to use it. 7. Check if all parts are fitted. 8. Check if the locking pin or device is in the correct position. Question 55. If a load has to be tipped on a slope, what may happen if the load is tipped downhill and why? The answer is. Weight transfer can cause the skid steer to tip forwards due to the movement of the center of gravity. Question 56. Name three attachments that are available for a skid steer. The answer is. 1. Clamshell bucket. 2. Backhoe. 3. Auger. 4. Brush. 5. Forks. Question 57. If the operator has loaded the machine onto a transporter or trailer on behalf of a driver, what checks must be carried out before they leave the cab? The answer is 1. The machine is in the agreed position. 2. Hydraulic operated components are grounded and pressure removed. 3. The parking brake is applied and the engine is switched off. 4. Windows shut. Question 58. What is regarded as the most productive position for the vehicle to be in when being loaded by a skid steer working from a stockpile? The answer is. Position the vehicle at a 45 degree angle to where the skid steer is entering the stockpile. Question 59. Apart from the operator, who else may need to use the machine's operator's manual? The answer is. Maintenance staff, supervisors, and transporter drivers. Question 60. The operator is asked to tip material into a trench. State five different requirements that must be considered or implemented before tipping commences. The answer is. 1. Check trench edge or shoring. 2. Check if all personnel has cleared the trench. 3. Check access and egress route. 4. Check for surrounding hazards. 5. Check if you have authorization to do the job permit to work. Question 61. Before manually changing any bucket. A. Where should the bucket be positioned, in relation to the ground, before removing the final pin, and B. Explain why. The answer is. A. The bucket should be placed on the ground. B. To prevent striking of personnel. Question 62. 
what three main duties of the Health and Safety at Work Act must employees follow? The answer is 1. Protect themselves and others who may be affected by their acts or omissions. 2. Cooperate with the employer. 3. Avoid interference, intentionally or recklessly with anything provided for safety. Question 63. Name three conditions that mirrors on the machine must be in. The answer is. 1. Must be fitted. 2. Must be clean. 3. Must be adjusted. 4. Should not be damaged. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to support this channel.